What's it like to play courses rated in the top 100 of the world? What is Lynx Golf in the UK really like? We're playing Royal Porth Call in Wales, ranked number 60 in the world. Once you pay your green fee, you're left alone to play and enjoy. No marshals, no cart girls, no caddies, unless you pre-book, just you and the course. Total bliss. The first hole is banked right to left with a matching wind. I use my L6 rangefinder to find carry distances of the bunkers. The reliable 4-iron will bounce right to left and into the first bunker. The wind will push it left and the dry fairway will increase rollout. The farthest bunker is 280 to carry, but if I hit the ball to the right, the wind and slope should help bring it past that bunker. I can't control a 9-iron from the deep rough on the left. Why? It's a raised green, and all approaches from the left will be over a pot bunker, so we'll prefer the deep rough, 60 yards short of the green. 50 yards, come on Matty, boom booms. Sit. What a hole, man. That's a, about a nine. Just push, dude. The fairway bunkers are in places that give me anxiety. I like that. All I care about today is missing the bunkers. I can't get more money than that. That's good? That's so good. Directly over the bunker. 156 down the breeze off the right. I think if I put a 9 iron up the right side, it should bring it nicely in. What a linksinator. Wow, not much break. Dude, I tell you what. We'll try hit some shapes on the ball, like a fade into the draw wind. We'll keep the ball low to the ground. It's a totally different game to soggy, windless Bermuda courses of Thailand. The shorter tee shots will get eaten up by the wind, but as long as I'm not in bunkers or deep grass, I'm happy. If I can put a good move on this thing, it's going to go in from the right and hopefully bounce up from about one, 180 with a 7-iron, 185. So if we can get a few rolls of rollout, a few yards of rollout here, I think we're going to be money. I'm going to start this way out right. I'm not going to hit a cut. I'm not going to hit a cut. Just rely on the wind. Might be a bit short there, players. Oh, well, I keep, I, I'm starting to cut across it now. You don't need to. Oh. Instead of closing the toe, I'm cutting across it. Yeah. 176, into the breeze, off the left. Just want to get this to the hole, so I'm going to hit a 5 iron. Normally a 6 or 7, but breeze is picking up and dropping down. Get in, get in. <laughs> what a birdie, man. Come on, partner. So I'm just gonna pump another. It's a four iron. I four think. iron. Well, the problem, the problem comes with the driver for me where I try to pump it into the wind because of the wind or try hit it soft and pull it. So. I found my swing again after one day of rest. This video is possible thanks to my friends at Swing Tweaks, which is a superb app that helps you find a swing when you're having troubles. How you ask? PGA professionals on the app give you tailored swing instruction, including drills specific to your swing through the app. A total time and money saver. Download Swing Tweaks using the link in the description and use code PLAYERS for 20% off your first tweak. Send them your swing through the app, tell them about your game, what's good, what's bad, and a pro will fix you up. It's so easy to use and professional feedback is very quick, but also in depth. 
and even better, stays on the app permanently. You can always refer back to it. Find your swing again, player. Yeah, I'm gonna just hack it out of these thingies and try to land it on the green there. Maybe a bunker splash. What a shot! Come on! Should be over. Okay, we've got we've got one seventy six. There's a bunker front left on the line, so I'm going to set it out at one of those big whirly fans over there, the right hand side one, and hopefully that wind which is coming into us, yeah, directly into us. Now if I put a little draw on that, it's probably going to accentuate that a little bit. So I'm going to hit it at that flag with a draw, 176 into the breeze. I'm going to have to hit a 5 iron, just like I did on that par 3, and let's hope for a draw. Off the slope, well the slope is helping a draw. Are they gone? Yeah. The reason I'm not hitting driver is just low confidence. I played a horrific round two days before this well, and I didn't want to spoil my fun at a top rated course. Any shape on the driver shot will be magnified by the wind. So we've got a couple of options here. We can either hit a chip. It's pretty, it's not too bad, it's pretty spongy down here. But I think it's so much like the green, I think a putt's good. If I hit a chip, I'm going to have to chip into the dome. And if I hit a higher lofted thing, have to be be sure not to teeth it so I think this is the higher percentage play it's a big right to lefter stroke index two so this is a bogey hole for me every day of the week oh it doesn't say that <laughs> I think I made it stop that's a bonus for that Good enough, huh? That's good enough. <laughs> what, what a day. What a beautiful day. You got that big dog. Look at that. What a good shot. Fuck this. We wasted our money on this course guard. Absolutely. No wonder they were too quick. Absolutely useless. Two two euros. Televised golf conditions us to think that only a green course is beautiful. Lynx golf has always been my favorite. Scraggly bunkers, pot bunkers, yellow, brown, green grass. The beauty of Lynx golf is unrivaled in my opinion. I really wanted a bird there, bro. <laughs> I got like a forward in. Turn! Turn! Okay, I need to hit more club. <laughs> Oh, what a touch, what a touch. I enjoyed the front nine. It was a very fragile level par nine holes. It can be tough to hold the game together with scotch tape in new conditions with wind and after a horrific prior round. On the back nine, we just need to hold it together, keep getting up and down, keep avoiding the tall grass and the bunkers. If I can do that, I'm going to be so happy. I don't know. I think a little bit left of the flag because there's a, a down slope short of the green. So I'm going to go probably four yards left of the pin and try and make it go 110 yards. 
So 110 from this lie. I think we can get downwind at 56 degree. I don't think it's going to stop though. So if it does go shorter, like 100, maybe it'll scoot up 15. Man, that's dead. Okay, geez, I thought that was going that deep ass bunker. Yeah, that was such a bad strike. Work. Did you see it bounce? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very Grind the bomb. Grind the bomb. I think we're just going to hack this out from 227. That was a puffy shot over that stake back in the fairway. We're going to play for the six. Lucky if we get a five. Gotta watch that. That's not good. That's next to that stake over there. Okay, here we go. Fourth shot. We're not looking much better, players. We've got a lot of grass. We're in a little weed there, but we are sitting up. Looks like we can run it up the left side, so that's the best option because am I gonna be able to make it land on the green from that light? Doubt it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a six iron, hopefully contact this ball. It's sitting up. I'm just gonna punch it. And hopefully let it roll up the left side of the green toward the hole. Go, great. Be really good. Be great. Just like the plan. Is it going to come back? Okay, a oh. little bit over, but that was the plan. Maybe a seven iron would be better. It's going to take break in the beginning. So I'm going to go at his ball. What a touch. What a Couple of bogeys on a difficult par three and par five with a blind tee shot is fine. A blind shot is only blind once. I'm gonna have to play that shot all day. I don't think I'm gonna land this on the green. We've got 105, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna putt this. slice with a seven iron into the breeze and let that breeze hold it off and land it soft on the green. I'm gonna have to try to get this halfway there. Ah oh. <laughs> I've tried to go so soft. What a putter. Properly. Kind of rushing now. Yeah, yeah got some looseness in it, but it hurt like hell in that knot. Yeah. That's... Okay, so the putt's into the breeze, it's downhills, but the breeze should stop it. The breeze will hit that, the hill lower there, where the hole is. <laughs> I'll take that four every day of the week. But it's clear to me that if I want to use a knockdown, 
punch shot, I need to learn to do it better with my longer irons. I need to develop the shot properly and bring it back to the UK. Now it comes out too pushy to the right and sometimes a bit thin. I'll get it right. I have the imagination and intention to play this course in level par. I need slightly better execution of shots, especially when it's windy. I teeth the hell out of that. Oh boy, sit down, sit down. It's dead straight. I'm going to hit a seven wood because seven wood is going to get through this rough and I think if we go over the left side of it the wind can bring it back in and leave me a decent shot let's do it yeah that's money right there Money. Wind's hitting it right now. Yeah, that's a beautiful shot. Beautiful shot. Now we've got like a wedge in. So what do we have left here, boyfriends? We've left ourselves 109 playing 113. And we've got a bit of a, I mean, not a bad lie. We do have a thick bit just in front of our ball here. So it's going to pop out. Potentially we're a little flyer. But we are almost directly into the wind. Yep. Or hard off the left. Diagonal wind like this. So... In my opinion, it's going to hold the ball up out of this lie. The way it pops up, it's going to hold it up like 20, 25 yards. So if I hit a 56, which is a normal 110 club, I'll probably not even reach the front of the green. So I'm going to punch out a pitching wedge and hopefully it will go below the wind or not so much high into the wind and actually land short and roll up. I could even punch a little nine, but I'll, I'll probably do a pitching wedge. Now the, the trouble we have from this grass is you can see if you have these long ones, they'll actually wrap around the club and open the club face. So I've got a few here around my ball, so I better be conscious of that. Now, does it open or does it close the club face? I don't know, it kind of feels like it closes it. So I might pop this up to the left. So I'll go a little right of the hole. Yep, it definitely closes the club face. And I'll try hold it and hit a little punch shot from 105. A little right of the pin, I think it's You'll notice how, as soon as I left the confines of the fairways, shots became much more difficult to get near the green. The deep rough gobbles up your club and the ball can go anywhere. If the rough weren't as long and we could see landing areas easily, I would attempt more drivers. I just don't like looking for golf balls and I don't like looking for them when I don't know where the ball landed. In the end, we dropped a few shots coming into the clubhouse. What's the reason? There were too many shots into the deep grass. Those were deadly for the score. Judging distances and making sure the remaining shots leave you in a great position is so key. We just need position and that position should be on a good lie. Coupling the ground conditions, the lie and the wind, that makes golf the best challenge. That could be in the hole. So I guess I'm into the breeze now, so I can probably put this into the air. And it should be good. You can probably get quite aggressive with it. I could have shot 90 today, and I wouldn't have cared. I love Lynx Golf. In South Africa, we have Humewood near my hometown. It's as good a Lynx course as Port Call, and I am so happy to play Lynx Golf again. The UK is full of these kinds of courses, and I intend to play around 50 of them when I return. This is real golf. This is infinitely better than any courses I play in Thailand. Wow.